Welcome to another episode of the Jam Pack Report today for December the 4th of 2020. And of course, this is your one stop shop for daily gaming news. So if you enjoy the show and you like what you see, hit that subscribe button and keep coming back for more. But a lot of BioWare fans are concerned today because Mass Effect and Dragon Age leads have left the company, with Casey Hudson and Mark Dara announcing their retirements. BioWare General Manager Casey Hudson and Dragon Age Executive Producer Mark Dara are leaving the studio. Lara Meal, Chief Studios Officer at Electronic Arts, announced the departures on the BioWare blog, alongside personal messages from Hudson and Dara. Hudson said in his note that after nearly 20 years with BioWare, he has made the decision to retire from the studio and make way for the next generation of studio leaders. Quote, when I became studio GM a little over three years ago, our goal as a leadership team was to position our people and projects for long-term success, Hudson said. Now, as BioWare celebrates its 25th anniversary, the studio is poised for an exciting new era of amazing games. This year, we have been inspired by the continued community support for our ongoing work on Star Wars The Old Republic and Anthem. A few months ago, we provided a deeper look at the work that's going into the next huge Dragon Age game. And on N7 Day, we announced Mass Effect The Legendary Edition and gave a hint at what's coming next in the Mass Effect universe. It is an exciting time, both in terms of the projects you've heard about and some things not yet announced. Arriving at this point has been an opportunity for me to reflect on my own future, and 2020 has been a year that forced us all to reimagine how we think about work and life. For me, it's been the realization that I still have tremendous energy to create, but also that I need to try something different. I'm not sure exactly what that is yet, but I know that I want to start by rediscovering my creative passion through more personal work. Dara will be replaced by Bioware Austin Studio Director Christian Daly as Executive Director on Dragon Age, Meal said. Like Hudson, Dara called his departure from Bioware a retirement from the studio. This has been a very difficult decision for me, Dara said. The team of amazing developers on Dragon Age make my life fuller and better. They have taught me so much, but the strength of the team is also what makes this possible. I know that Dragon Age won't just survive without me, it will thrive. Hudson's first credit of Bioware came as a designer and artist on MDK2, released in 2000. He left Bioware in 2014 and joined Microsoft the following year. Hudson rejoined Bioware in 2017, replaced the departing GM Aaron Flynn. Dara was joined by uh, excuse me, Dara joined Bioware in 1997 and originally worked as a programmer, according to his LinkedIn profile. Of course, Bioware has a slew of announcements coming out, with the recently announced Mass Effect The Legendary Edition, a collection of the first three core Mass Effect games, and revealed early artwork for the next Mass Effect title. The developers also showed off early development of a new Dragon Age game earlier this summer. So first and foremost, what does this mean for the games that are coming out? And ultimately, there will be shifts behind the scenes. And in a lot of ways, the Mass Effect and Dragon Age situation is very similar to what I think a lot of people are feeling from 343 behind Halo Infinite, where you do see a lot of shifts going on in the studio in the midst of a pretty big project. I mean, when you look at these big titles, Mass Effect and Dragon Age, that's the, you know, meat of Bioware. That is what they make and what they're known for. And of course, an Anthem revamp is reportedly still in the works. They have said that it is and nothing has changed as of right now. So they have a lot cooking and to see this much change is definitely going to be jarring for some fans. But I have faith in the direction that the company is going, and ultimately you have to trust in the decisions that are being made behind the scenes. Uh, and I like what Hudson says here, where they are paving the way for the next generation of studio leaders. And this is poising the studio for an exciting new era of amazing games. No company is the same. Regardless of its industry, regardless of its team, there is a constant flow of people. And so if you look to other big industry leaders, like in the world of PlayStation, Sucker Punch and Naughty Dog, if these studios hadn't changed and continually pushed themselves further, then you wouldn't have experiences like The Last of Us and Infamous and Uncharted and... I mean, so many other ones you have with Sucker Punch, specifically Ghost of Tsushima comes to mind for earlier this year. If they had just continued on the uh, Sucker Punch side of things making Sly Cooper and on the Naughty Dog side of things making Jack and Daxter, you never would have been able to see these incredible experiences. And of course, some of that leadership has been there since the very beginning. Uh, but the point still stands. The teams are different. The studios have shifted. Their goals have changed. And so, whatever the future of Bioware is, needs to be a natural occurrence of the flow in which it is going. Make what feels natural to you. 
push what the team wants to make because every game is better by passion from the team behind the scenes. And so, whether that be a Mass Effect game, a Dragon Age game, whatever it might be, make something that is filled with passion that people want to play. Now, I do think that uh, what Dara said has weight to it as well. The team at Bioware is strong. He would not leave if it was not. Uh, but ultimately, I am still looking forward to seeing what Bioware has to bring to the table. Uh, but it certainly is a bit jarring to know that these big projects are in the works and ultimately some of the uh, biggest elements of leadership are beginning to shift behind the scenes. Again, I am one that has faith, but it also is jarring for those long-term fans. Next up, God of War is officially in Fortnite. Kratos is officially available in Epic's Battle Royale. Of course, it is Chapter 2, Season 5 of Fortnite, and Epic Games has released a short trailer showcasing the God of War in a Battle Royale game. And he's available as a skin now in the item shop. What's more, the Kratos skin is not a console exclusive, so anybody playing Fortnite can charge onto the island as the God of War. Players can get the Kratos skin on its own or as part of the Kratos bundle, which comes with the full Oathbreaker set. This includes the Guardian Shield Glider, Leviathan Axe Pickaxe, and Mimir Back Bling. There is also a custom Kratos emote as part of the set. Fortnite players matchmaking on a PlayStation 5 will also unlock the Armored Kratos style bonus skin after purchasing the Kratos outfit. And so, there you have the uh, official Kratos lineup here in the world of Fortnite. Uh, now, this is just one of many to come, I believe, because a new Fortnite leak might show Master Chief plus other Halo goodies coming to the game. Fortnite is showing no signs of slowing down this year after a record-breaking Marvel event and a recent tease for a God of War crossover which has now been implemented. Leakers are reporting that the Bubblegum Battle Royale game might also soon see a Halo collaboration as well. Right now, data miners and leakers are sharing small, somewhat blurry images, apparently hailing from web forum 4chan that appear to show the Master Chief in the skin select menu for Fortnite. Additionally, there are also images that show a tiny warthog and a pelican, both of which are vehicles that you can use in Halo. Polygon has reached out to Epic Games to verify the authenticity of the images, but it's worth noting that the timing makes sense. Previously, Halo Infinite was supposed to be out for the holiday season for the Xbox Series X, but has now been delayed to 2021. Interest in the brand, while Microsoft puts the finishing touches on the upcoming shooter, continues to grow, but for now, Fortnite fans will have to settle for donning the Mandalorian's signature Besker armor or diving in as Kratos from Fortnite. So it does make sense uh, for this to be the direction they go in, and I would love uh, to see this Halo skin come to the game. I actually re-downloaded Fortnite last night uh, for the first time in over two years, I think, uh, and sat down to play a couple of games. I did get one Victory Royale, just throwing that out there. Uh, I was playing squads with no headset on. I literally just sat down on the, on the couch and started playing Fortnite. Uh, but ultimately, I would love to see this kind of thing come to the game. And my question is, who from Nintendo will be included? Uh, again, we talked yesterday about the potential for Samus to come to the game, which a lot of people online are saying would be a good choice. Uh, but I would personally love to see more stuff from Bethesda. Put Doom Guy in the game. Would love to see that. I mean, if he's coming to Fall Guys, I don't see why you wouldn't put him in Fortnite. Uh, but ultimately, I'm looking forward to seeing if these are true. But if you do want to dive in, Kratos is available now in the item shop. But finally, if you are more into these grindy gear-based games, The Division 2 is getting some enhancements for PS5 and Xbox Series X and S in 2021. Ubisoft Massive officially revealed that the title update 12.1 for The Division 2 will include visual improvements on PS5 and series consoles. In the latest episode of Ubisoft's State of the Game stream around The Division 2, the developers revealed that an enhancement update will hit PS5 and Xbox Series X and S earlier in February 2021. The Division 2 is one of the many games that are playable on PS5 and Series X and S through backward compatibility. However, same as Rainbow Six Siege, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and For Honor, The Division 2 will also receive a performance improvement update on new consoles. According to the developers, the title update 12.1 will be available for all players of the game across all platforms on February 2nd of next year, including the enhancement upgrade for PS5 and Series X that brings 60fps at 4K resolution to life. In the case of the Series S, Ubisoft Massive did not go into specifics, but at least the console will likely be able to run the game on 1080 resolutions at 60fps. The Division 2 was originally launched back in 2019, and Ubisoft is still supporting the game with new content updates. Regarding the fact that The Division 2 did not succeed in getting an acceptable financial performance, it's yet to be seen whether Ubisoft would be working on a sequel to the series or shift its focus to other titles and IPs. 
Currently, Ubisoft has a load of games under development, including Far Cry 6, Rainbow Six Quarantine, Beyond Good and Evil 2, Roller Champions, Riders Republic, Skull and Bones, Settlements, and some other unannounced projects from various studios of the company. It's also worth noting that in the past two months, they put out Watch Dogs Legion, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and Immortals Phoenix Rising. Uh, rolling hard over there at Ubisoft for sure. Now, now, this is not one that I ever really got into. I played a couple of hours of it during one of the free weekends, uh, but it is more of The Division. If you enjoyed the original, then The Division 2 is more of that. Uh, and these enhancement updates, I feel, are an easy way for developers to bring value to a game without investing tons of money into building a new experience. So, for instance, looking to For Honor. Instead of building a For Honor 2, there's plenty of content there that many players might not have returned to on the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 generation, so they might as well go ahead and enhance the game and see if they can get more people to play in round two. The same goes for Rainbow Six Siege. The game has been out for a number of years now. In the olden days, you could have easily seen three Rainbow Six Siege games come out between the launch of the original and where we are today. But they've just continually iterated and added more value, and they've grown it into this giant behemoth of a game that continues to bring value, and now it's bringing more value to the Xbox Series X, S, and PlayStation 5 with no signs of slowing down. Uh, so The Division 2 could very well be one of those evolutionary games if people continue coming back to it. And right now, I don't know what the player count looks like. Uh, this is not a game that I've kept up with, but if handled appropriately, it very well could see long-term success. But that rounds out today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, drop me a like down below and let me know what you think about the future of Bioware. What do you think about these departures? How do you feel about the upcoming games? Would love to hear what you have to say. But until Monday, you guys have a fantastic weekend. I'll talk to you soon and peace. <laughs>